CPRM deep dive webinar, where we'll be going over some best practices to optimize and customize the Monday.com sales CRM product at every stage. This session is ideal for anyone who has an understanding of the basic features and flow of the CRM and would like to learn more about best practices for customizing the pipeline to fit your needs. I want to confirm that in this webinar, we will not be going through the basic flow of the sales CRM product. If you are looking for a more general demo of how the product works A to Z, I recommend watching our sales CRM product demo before returning to this webinar. Now today we'll be going over five main focus areas, optimizing lead management, optimizing contact management, overview and communication optimization, activities tracking optimization, and reporting. As we go through each of these topics, it will be helpful to keep in mind how they relate to the CRM sales pipeline and the different ways you can optimize your workflow at each phase of the pipeline. From the different ways you can structure your board and organize your leads, to automating your workflow and optimizing various data points for reporting, this demo will build on the existing features of Monday Sales CRM to further streamline your workflow and help you close more deals. Now let's get started with the first section, optimizing lead management. In this section, we will go over organizing leads by lead status, additional data to track about leads, improving the contact us form, automating contact creation on lead qualification. Now let's head over to mymonday.com account. Now I assume you're all <coughs> already working with Monday Sales CRM and are therefore familiar with the five boards in, within the CRM workspace. We have our leads board, deals, contacts, accounts, activities, plus the sales dashboard. You've probably realized that these boards cannot be deleted, and the same is true for certain columns on the board, as they are critical to the workflow. However, we can add additional columns to make your workflow even more powerful, which is what we will focus on on this webinar. Getting started from our leads board, which is of course where we will collect new leads and manage them. Now your leads board is organized as a directory for all of your incoming leads. Each item on your board is a lead, and the columns help you organize the contact information which you are inputting from various different sources, such as the form or uh, an integration that you are using or if you are importing them manually. Now, the leads board comes with a single group by default, but it's good practice to further segment your leads, which can be achieved by adding additional groups. For example, the first group can represent new leads, and then we can add another group to represent leads in progress, and a third group to represent unqualified leads. Perfect. Now, this will help you organize your leads at a glance. With the additional groups, you can then set up automations to move your leads with the change of a status. Now, let's go ahead and add these automations to our board. When status changes to something, we're going to choose move item to group. Perfect. Now while we're here, let's add the same automation for our third group. When status changes to unqualified, then move item to unqualified. Now let's just see this in action. Let's say we've decided that Elion over here um, we've already reached out to her, we've contacted her, and then we can go ahead and move this, her over to the contacted group. Um, perhaps we have another lead here, which we already know off the bat is unqualified. We can just go ahead and select unqualified. And then let's say we reached out to Kimberly Jackson. But after several phone calls and emails back and forth, we realize she isn't actually interested. So I'm going to go ahead and unqualify Kimberly over here. Right. Now this really helps us organize our leads um, and decide who sh should move on to the rest of the sales pipeline. Now moving on, there might be some additional data points that you want to track on your leads. We discussed how to organize them and structure your board so that you can keep track um, of the type of lead. Um, but let's just see if perhaps we want to add some additional columns to the board so that we can better keep track of our leads and our communication with them. Um, 
For example, we might want to go ahead and add the creation log column. Then, and this will help us track the exact date the lead was generated. Um, we can easily just add this to our board. And of course, you can go ahead um, per column, you can go ahead and sort this by date to see when they were last contacted um, and who needs to be reached out to because they have been uh, created quite some time ago. Um, the ne a next column that you might find helpful would be to go ahead and add a date column. Now we're going to call this the last contacted date. Now, this date column will be updated manually uh, each time we have a phone call with one of our leads, um, but we could also add additional um, automations using emails and activities, which we are going to discuss later on. So this will help us keep track of any time we emailed or reach out to a client. Now, let's look at ways we can customize the Contact Us form, which is the second tab over here, connected to the Leads board. The questions on the Contact Us form reflect the columns on your board. And if you want to add additional questions, you can either add the additional columns to your board, or you can also do this from inside the form builder itself. Now let's just go ahead and click Edit Form to see how this works. Now here we can add questions which will automatically create a new column on our board. For example, let's say I want to know the size of the company for every new lead to help me qualify them. And say I want the person filling out the form to choose from four different options. I'm going to go ahead and add this question right after the email. And let's choose a single select status column. What size is your company? I'll let them choose from these four different options. Okay, great. And this will automatically add a status column to my board. Now you can also add conditional questions. Uh, conditional questions ensure that the person submitting the form is only asked the relevant questions, enabling you to streamline your workflow using one form. For example, if the potential lead responds one through 19 as a company says, I want to add some additional questions to help me qualify the lead later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click include condition. I will also make this required and I'm going to choose my first option, one through 19. And I wanna make sure that the small companies are worth reaching out to and are a qualified lead. Let's add a new question. I'm just going to use a text column, but of course you can use a numbers column as well. And I'm going to write, what is your budget? Again, I will make this required, perfect. And while I'm here, I'm going to Make sure that everything looks good, ready to go. Now under the customize button, you have various different settings for customizing the UI, determining what happens when someone submits a form and more. I'm not going to go over each setting, but I want to highlight that you can remove the monday.com branding right over here. You can create customized messages once a user submits a form. And then under the builder settings, you can specify which group that the submissions should land in. By default, they will land in the top group. I'm going to leave that as new leads. Perfect. Now, while I'm here, I just want to remind you that you can share this form on your website um, using a link, or you can embed it using the iframe embedding tool. Now let's head back to our main table. And let's finish the section by looking at how we can automate moving qualified leads to become contacts in the contacts board alongside our existing customers. We can do this using the built-in button column here, move to contacts. Now the automation will create a contact once we've qualified our lead and it is already set up. So let's just take a closer look and see how it works and make some slight adjustments. Now, the trigger for this automation is when the button create a contact is clicked. The predetermined action is then move item to contacts. Now you can see here, the parameters have already been selected, but we can decide which data will populate the columns. By clicking on the item parameter, we open up this window. 
Now on the left, we have the columns on the context board, and on the right, we can choose the column values from the leads board. And since, since we have the equivalent columns on the contacts board as we have on our leads board for the contact information of the lead, we can simply map the values from one board to another, and this will automatically populate here. But we do have different status columns here. So we have the type and the priority that we might want to change. So for example, here, we can write in high and change this depending on what we would like this to uh, um, appear as once it reaches our context board. And then for the type, let's just automatically make them a customer. Perfect. Great. Now let's go ahead and see this in action. Great, so we have our new contact generated, and I'm going to select Move to Contacts. Heading over to our Contacts board, our new contact, Alexander Brown, was created, and we have High Priority Customer. Perfect. Now that we've gone through the best practices for organizing leads, let's move on to the next section where we'll, we'll discuss how to optimize contact management once a qualified lead moves into the next phase of the sales pipeline.